Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week I thought we'd talk a little bit about online backup. Uh, having a good backup strategy includes not only uh, your documents being uh, backed up to maybe a time machine drive or a drive that's attached to your computer, your server, uh, but also having a backup that's off-site. And one of the ways to do that is to have an online backup of all of your data so that you have an easy way to get a hold of it if you have something catastrophic happen so that you can restore your system. Uh, also because it's in a leather location if something catastrophic happens where you live uh, you don't have to worry about losing everything because you've got an online copy. And so what I thought I'd do today is talk about one of those online backups uh, systems and that's called Backblaze. Now the thing about Backblaze that uh, makes it really neat is it will back up all of your data. Uh, it's uh, it's got a, uh, a really uh, easy pricing structure, uh, so it's, it's just uh, you know, $5.95, uh, uh, I believe, a month, uh, or $5 a month uh, is basically what it is. And so uh, with that, it's $5 per computer, and that includes all of the drives and things that are attached to that computer as well. And so there's no limit as to uh, how much you can back up. Now, like anything else with an online backup system, you've got the issue of um, you know the bandwidth and how long it takes you to back up, but I'll talk you through that in a little bit. So you start best just by creating an account. So I'm going to create an account here. They ask for an email. So I'm going to do that. And, uh, and then a password. And so you create whatever password you want to have uh, for that. And then you just download the free trial. Okay, and so you can see it's going to download it. And basically, what you're going to do is double click the install disk and run the Backblaze installer. Now, one thing to keep, keep in mind is it also has an uninstaller built in as well, so that if you want to uninstall it later, you can do it uh, with the same disk image that you downloaded. So let's uh, get that disk image. I'm just going to come up here and double click it, <clears throat> and it's going to launch the disk image. And let me, uh, let me just pop this down here and center this a little bit so you can get a feel for it. So again, I'm just going to click this uh, Backblaze installer. And I'm going to open it. And so basically what you do is you uh, click Install. It says you agree to the licensing terms when you do that. And it already has your uh, account information in there uh, as you set it up. So I'm going to click Install now. And it's going to ask for your username and password because it's going to install a system preference pane. So it needs to have that information to do that. And so now it's going to go through the process of installing. And you can see it's starting to do that right now. It's analyzing the drive. And it's got this progress bar and it kind of gives you little hints and tips and things like that about the actual system itself and now the install is complete and ready to go. So you click finish and close and what happens is, and let me just uh, put this down here, what happens is, is up here in the corner you notice a little flame uh, there and you can see that it says how many files you have and it has all this other information. You got back these preferences and let me just click that because inside your preference pane is where the actual backup information uh, is placed. And so what's nice about this is that it's built right into the system itself in system preferences. It happens automatically in the background and, up, and back up, backs up everything. And it really does a nice job. Now, if you come in here to settings, and let's just do that for a second, and take a look at the various settings we've got. Uh, you have an online name for this computer, and that's the name that you'll see when you go to their website. If you ever have to restore anything, you can go back to the Backblaze website to do that. Uh, it has the temporary dri uh, data drive uh, for information. You, you click the server, or you know that's my hard drive there, or another one. I've got two drives to choose from. Uh, you can have warnings that it'll warn you when you're not backed up after so many days, if you want to have warnings. Show back Backblaze in the menu bar, which is what I showed you uh, at the top with the flame in the menu bar there. And then you select the hard drives you want to back up, and you can just check the ones you want. Now, obviously, I'm not going to check these. These are disk images right here. Um, but you can see the two hard drives are selected, so it's going to back those up, uh, which is great. Then you have the Performance tab here. And this is what's really great about this system, is that what will happen is, is you can have an automatic throttle or a manual throttle. And, uh, and so if I just uncheck this, I can choose how much of my bandwidth I want this to take up when it backs up.
So going this direction is a faster network. In other words, I'm going to be using my network. I don't want to take up all my bandwidth and have everything slow down while it's uploading things to the internet. I want to go on the slow side here and uh, just do it that way. Or I can do faster backups over here, which says, hey, take all the bandwidth you want, and I'll just deal with the slowness. And what you can do is adjust these. You can adjust them, say, hey, you know, I'm going to, before I go to bed, I'm going to slide it over here and just let it run all night. Now, one thing you have to understand about these backups is that they do take time. Uh, when you're looking at, you know, uploading, you know, you know, 2.34, you know, megabytes per second, uh, and that's on a on a faster connection, it's going to take some time. And so, if you've got, you know, a lot of data, it's going to take weeks. Uh, to do that, uh, and sometimes months, a uh, month or so. So you just need to know that about online backup. But the great thing is once you get it up there in the cloud, then what happens is it'll incrementally backup changes as time goes by. And this really is a program where you can set it and forget about it. And it'll just do those updates for you. Now you can say backup when, ba battery, uh, when on battery power. And that's when you want to check it. If you got a laptop or something like that, you you want to check that so that it's only when it's on battery power, power, not when it's uh, when it's when it's only plugged in. You want to uncheck that so that you're not doing it on battery power. Uh, in this case, I've got a desktop, so I can leave that checked. That doesn't matter to me. Uh, so you can set this. I'm just going to leave it on automatic throttle, so it's just going to figure out the bandwidth itself. Now you can also set a schedule to it, and this is kind of nice too. You can say backup continuously, which is recommended, right? Because as you go, it's going to back things up. But if you've got a lot of stuff, you got work to do during the day, and you don't want to slow it down, you can actually say backup once per day, or only when you click backup. And if you say once per day, then you can set the time frame of when you want that to happen. So you can do it like when you go to bed and, and that kind of stuff if you want to make that work. I'm going to leave it here this way. Uh, you can set up exclusions, and it automatically shows the different things that are excluded automatically. Uh, and uh, different files. You can add files to that and, and maybe drives you don't want to back up that you don't need. You can do that as well. Now this is important here. It says do not back up files larger than basically four gigabytes. Well if you've got you know maybe movie files and things like that that might be bigger I would just come in here and just set this to no limit. That way it's not going to limit it. It's going to back up whatever uh, whatever you've got on your drives and you can literally then set it and forget about it and not go oh no what happened to that file that I didn't get a chance to back up. Uh, you've also got uh, security stuff here where you can actually add your own encryption key. So you have a login and password to get into your Backblaze account, but if you don't want anybody to, to really get into your account unless you're the only one who can access it, you can set a private encryption key. Now if you do that, Backblaze themselves, their employees, can't crack into that. So if you forget your key, basically your data is gone. You're going to have to start all over again because they don't know what your key is either. And so it really is a private encryption key. So if you want security, that would be something you could set up as well if you want a little extra security. And then you've got reports. And the reports just basically show you kind of where is all your data going. And I don't have much on this machine here, so you can see there's not a lot. Uh, but it'll kind of show you generally where, where the, uh, the bulk of my backup information is. And uh, it's kind of neat. You can have reports. You can have a file schedule for backup. It'll show you which ones need to be back up right now, an event log. Uh, so it gives you, you know, a little bit of information. Now once you click OK, then it goes and it uh, it's ready to reset itself. You can click the Backup Now button and uh, basically it'll look to see if it needs anything to get backed up. Right now because everything's set, I don't have any files to be backed up, so it's not going to do anything. But uh, but that's how you set up the preference pane. And like I said, it just kind of runs up here in the in the bar. You can click down and see what files need to be updated up here in the corner. And it really is a great set it and forget it kind of a thing. And for five bucks per computer with unlimited drives attached to it, uh, it really is a, a, a very good deal and uh, a really great service. Now, if you happen to lose data and you want to get it get it uh, off their website, you can click this Restore Options button, and it'll tell you the different options. You can do a web download for free. You can have them send you a uh, USB flash drive of up to 64 gigs, and they'll have to they'll charge you for that. Or you can actually have a USB drive and get all your files sent to you um, uh, during uh, via FedEx. And so that makes it kind of a nice thing too. Uh, or you can just like if you're going to do the web download, you can sign in on the website. And so let me do that real quick here just to show you kind of what it looks like to have a restore. So as you can see here, I've got uh, my server, right? I've got the uh, machine that I have backed up there. It tells me it's backed up from beginning of time and today. And then down here, you can see I've got my drive, and I can literally just sort of navigate my file structure here uh, to find uh, whatever files that I want to back up. And whatever I check, I can actually uh, get, get those things restored if I want to. In fact, let me... Uh, 
let me just uh, dig into this a little bit. You can see just the whole file structure. And there's a couple things there. Maybe I want to download those things. And so then I would just click Continue with Restore. And what it's going to do, let me just click that for a second. What it's going to do is it's going to send me an email when it's ready to be restored. And when it's done and it's set that up for me and I get that email, it'll take me back here to this My Restore area. And you can see right there is my restore file. It's preparing it. When it's done, I'll be able to download it and then just restore those files. So it really is a great service. Uh, but Backblaze is great. Uh, in a future screencast, I'll show you what it looks like to operate this on your iOS device because they have an iOS uh, plugin that allows you to get access to your files as well. Well, that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.